to come in to work in a judicial sector reform. Because given the scale of the violations that you hear people talking about, it is evident that the system at this point is stressed. And it's a system that is just in transition. Um, you need to work with the new authorities to build the capacities of the judicial sector institutions. Then when you get to that point when accountability has to be ensured, you have systems that can work efficiently, effectively, and according to due process of law. Which takes me to the next point. In the 10 years that I've been reporting on the Gambia, the issue of the Constitution featured prominently. Among other things, I was told by many Gambians, among them some of those who are in power now, that the country's laws were written to suit the convenience of one man, the president at the time. They raised the issue of the lack of adequate parliamentary oversight and an age limit for the president and the vice president. Rebuilding the country's institutions is crucial to get things right. So what sort of a constitution does Gambia want, or what does it in fact need to avoid sliding into another dictatorship? Jill Yabe, what is your view on this in terms of rebuilding institutions. I'll, I'll come to uh, Yassin in a moment because the bar seems to be in, involved in that. But what do you think uh, needs to be rebuilt in terms of the institutions so it doesn't slide back into a one-man rule? I think the first thing that I would say is that um, to address actually justice issues as, you know, even job creation, you need strong political leadership, but you also need capacity. Uh, and Capacity means human resources and it means institutions. It means the system that are in place. And so uh, I don't think that uh, on the more structural issues you can expect uh, solutions immediately. And I think that's why it is so important to manage the expectation of the, of the people in what can be done uh, quickly by this government and what are the steps that have to be taken very clearly. And But you need to explain to the people that those steps are being taken. Concerning the Constitution uh, especially, uh, I'm from a country, uh, Benin, where actually there has been a lot of discussion about constitutional reform very recently. In many other countries uh, in West Africa, there have been discussion about reform of the Constitution. When I look at the Constitution of Gambia, and actually I did that last year in the framework of a uh, uh, work that we, we did at what in the, the think tank, we are looking at different constitutions uh, in West Africa and beyond. Actually, the Constitution of Gambia is far from being the worst uh, in terms of uh, uh, guarantees that are written in the Constitution, even the protection of rights, when you read the preamble of the, Gamb the Gambian Constitution, you can see that actually you have a long list of uh, 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 rights that are protected uh, by the Constitution. And you have actually an institution which is in charge of making sure that the rights are protected and that the Constitution is respected. That is the High Court uh, of Justice. So the problem is that we didn't see that at all. So the problem is not only, it's not necessarily the major problem, not necessarily the Constitution itself. The major problem is how to make sure that uh, when you have someone, a president, who doesn't want to respect the Constitution, how you make sure that there are other institutions that are in place and that are capable of reacting and putting some uh, barriers to what can be done. And that's why it is so important to have a strong what we call constitutional court. It could be a high court here. You can change the name. But it is so important to have you know, a body which is respected, uh, which has a credible kind of a moral authority, uh, really, and capable to say no to a president when it, you know, it, it take a decision that contravenes the spirits and the letter of the Constitution. I mean, Yassin Senghor, uh, to be honest, I'd like to be president of the Gambia because it seems a very easy job to do. You appoint somebody today, whatever position, it becomes that. No check in that regard. Do you think checks and balances need to be strengthened? Is there a need for a review of your country's constitution as soon as now, maybe? I believe that there is a need for both constitutional and legal re um, review. We need to check our constitution again, and we also need to check the laws that we have in place at the moment. So that is a process that we have to go through. But I agree with uh, Mr. Giles when he says that the constitution of the Gambia is not the worst constitution that you will have. There are checks and balances in there, and there are protections in there. What we had was that our institutions were not strong enough to enforce the provisions of the constitution. So a lot of the issues that people came up with, we had provisions within the constitution which should support you, 
but unfortunately we didn't have the institutions which were brave enough to actually enforce those provisions. So in addition to the constitutional and legal reform that has to take place, I think we should have institutional reform to strengthen the institutions that should apply the provisions of the constitution and the law. to that. Um, do people here feel they have faith in the system as it stands in the Constitution? Yes, sir. Uh, stand up if you would and give us your name. Uh, my name is Suma W. Jadama. I am a journalist and at the same time a student. Uh, uh, currently, the most important thing is here is, like other previous speakers have said it, patient is very important. And as a citizen, what we, our role, we need to do, play the role of a complementary role towards helping the system that we voted for. We cannot just, you know, vote for a change and relax in our roles in helping the system to grow. So Gambians uh, have a responsibility themselves exactly. to we, support we, the system. We, we have both a moral and a civic responsibility in helping the system to at least execute it, you know, its function, you know, to a level that we, we are all yearning for. So patience here is very important. Like uh, during the period of 22 years, a lot of crazy things has happened, like from the side of the government, and you know the, the, that government has enabled us, you know, who you know resides in our current society. And in order to fish those, you know, enable us out, we need what we call expansion, so okay. that you know the uh, the institutions can you know function effectively towards you know realizing the justice that we are yearning so for. So everyone's got their role to play. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Musaba. I'm a school teacher and a blogger. I want to say that um, I think um, I will agree with what uh, the gentleman said. We have to uh, have uh, preso groups in addition to the checks and institutions that check the, 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 the reforms. We have to have people, ordinary people, who form preso groups to make sure that the laws are followed. Yes, sir, you uh, wanted to say something. I, I just want to start, first of all, Pastor by Forbes. saying thank you, Dr. Chambers. I mean, I think the greater bulk of us know you did a lot to give us what we have. So I want to go on record as saying that. And secondly, in um, piggybacking on what Nyang said and the gentleman behind, we can get involved, but um, a people lose their zeal if they keep telling you that a particular appointment is above an age that's um, written in the constitution and we seem to think you don't listen and people lose their zeal when they ask questions and they don't seem to have answers and people lose their zeal when they think the national assembly should be more inclusive especially in the nominated members and it seems to be one-sided so you engage and engage and then you give up and maybe use the back way. So are you talking about communication again between yes. the government and the people? I think the top bottom approach is totally absent. Um, the Honorable Minister is doing well, but his answers tell us or appear to tell us that the information is not there. And so the government has to communicate to us, so we communicate back. It's going to be a cycle and a tandem, and we can do a bottom top approach. We did that to put them in power. Now they must reciprocate to us. Hello there and welcome to the news at 10, first our top stories. Ministers from across West Africa validate the Banjo plan of action seeking to prevent statelessness in the sub-region. The Ministry of the Interior issues a warning to private security companies operating without valid licenses. Brazil may be crown champions of beach soccer, but Ugandans are catching up fast in the game. Two million barrels of crude oil from Iraq is bound for Egypt under a new bilateral agreement between the two countries. These and other stories coming ahead in the next hour. I am Fatou Yassi. Thank you for joining us. Ministers representing 15 West African states, joined by high-profile dignitaries, Tuesday validated and adopted the Banjo Plan of Action, seeking to protect stateless people. Eshan Silva reports. Ministries attending the regional ministerial conference have expressed strong political will to end statelessness in the continent 
this as they agreed to implement the National Action Plan on Statelessness 2017 to 2024. UNICEF is fully committed to supporting countries in their effort to reach the Sustainable Development Goal, including its target 16.9, that aims by 2030 at providing legal identity for all, including birth registration. Gambia, as the host country, has taken the lead with its vice president pointing out government's resolve to promote inclusion of stateless people in society. We are committed to renew our commitment to join you all today in implementing the recommendations of the conference in order to strengthen our commitment which we had made during the first conference and the roundtable meeting that was held on human rights community including ECOWAS Court of Justice the African Court for Human Rights. She went on to recommend an all-inclusive document to emerge from the conference, which she believed can end what she called a menace to humanity. This conference must therefore build on the momentum of strong sub-regional, continental, and international commitment to address the root causes of statelessness, not the symptomatic. Further emphasizing government's firm stance to lead the advocacy to end statelessness in West Africa, the Interior Minister Maifati disclosed government's plans to come up with the necessary legal provisions. We will harmonize our policies, the best international practice. We will legislate if necessary. We will implement policies that are required in order to integrate and give every citizen of West Africa, every community citizen of West Africa, a sense of belonging. The Banjul National Plan of Action for 2017 to 24 is a 19-page document containing six main objectives, highlighting key points which ECOWAS member states are obliged to adhere to. Objective three, for instance, guarantees free movement of stateless persons, their integration as well as protection, whilst objectives four and six challenge political leaders in the sub-region to implement the document. I wish to urge this August meeting to seize this opportunity and adopt this all important document and to commit to ensure its successful implementation so that the region can effectively address many cross-cutting threats to peace and security related to statelessness. In a region that is so profoundly shaped by human mobility as this one, both historically and today, protecting populations on the move from becoming stateless is of crucial importance. Gambia, as a key member, is said to have already implemented some of the main points, such as Objective 4, which also emphasized the need to sensitize people on statelessness. Also, a nationwide survey was reportedly conducted by the Gambia Commission for Refugees on how many undocumented people live in the country. And once statistics are published, the agency will have its job cut out following the adoption of the plan of action. Etienne Silva, GRTS News. The Ministry of the Interior says it has noticed that most private security companies are operating without valid license. A statement from the Ministry notes that this is a violation of law as clearly stipulated in Section 5, Subsection B of the Private Security Guard Companies Act. Therefore, all private security guard companies that fall under this category are strictly required by the Ministry to regularize their licensing status on or before May 30th. Failure to do so so would lead to an immediate closure of the company. The release ends. Now, Lieutenant General Masane Enkinte Tuesday met with members of the Ghanaian Economic Forces in Bara. The CDS's visit was meant to enhance dialogue between the two forces. Modu Bajan tells us more. Chief of Defense Staff Lieutenant General Masane Enkinte and his team had a series of engagements including talks on strengthening cooperation with economic forces at Bara and elsewhere in the country. We've just witnessed the interaction we have with the CDS today concerning his nationwide tour. Given that this is his first port of call, how important is the CDS's visit to the economic forces? It's a real privilege to have the CDS as business for the, as the first leg 
of his tour. It means that also we are also being recognized as part of Gambian forces, of which we are proud of. And we very, very appreciate the tip of the CDS visit to us. The military officials dilated on the essence of ensuring that peace and stability prevails in the country. Your former president and your current president, they have all been very passionate about ensuring that the economic mandate that was to guarantee peace and stability in the Gambia and allow the government to, to function and discharge services to the population of the, this country is uh, pretty much upheld. And I want to thank the contingent commander and each and every member of the Ghanaian contingent for the sacrifice and the service that they continue to deliver. Economic contingent commander Lieutenant Colonel Seth Odai also reiterated the significance of cooperating with the country's armed forces, saying that this is of great importance. Since the day we arrived in Gambia, you have been a very fruitful cooperation between us and the Gambia armed forces. Uh, we are lucky there was a company, eight post, company posts just uh, close by, so we had that smooth liaison with their forces and also the CEO at the Farafeni have been very cooperative. And we'll be operating together on joint patrols, joint duties, and anything that you require, they're ready for us to work together. As further stated by officials, including CDS Kinte, the economic forces should be enjoined in ensuring that peace and stability gets back to its peak in the Gambia. The performance of the, the troops the comportment of members of your detachment and the interaction that I just shortly had with uh, your CEO and the operations officer have been very impressive. They have given me a very good brief of your operations. I want to enjoin you to continue the good work being part of the force that came here, we are very, very happy with the Gambians for the kind of peace they are enjoying now. And we will continue to support whatever means that we can to ensure that the peace prevail in this country. Lieutenant Colonel Seth Odai led the visitors on a tour of the economic makeshift premise before receiving sporting and other gifts from their Gambian counterparts. Bayan reporting for GRTS News. State attorneys continue to usher more witnesses in the criminal trial against nine former intelligence chiefs facing a 12-count indictment for murder, conspiracy and assault at the High Court. The day's proceedings saw defense lawyers finish the cross-examination of prosecution's first witness in the trial. That was followed by the calling of witness number two. Another state intelligence operative and current director of the NIA's West Coast Region branch, Omar Boja. The witness, who also served as technical director under the former administration of the intelligence agency delivered a brief testimony which was followed by a cross-examination under the counsel for the first accused lawyer. The trial that began at a slow pace is expected to be expedited. A former intelligence chief and a medical doctor from the EFSTH are facing multiple criminal charges in the alleged torture and murder of political activist Solo Sunday. An international investment forum has just kicked off in Banjo. The two-day event is expected to bring together investors from the world to boost agricultural production in the Gambia. Farmer Kanya tells us more. The Gambia is hosting the International Agriculture Investment Forum bringing together local and international investors in the agricultural sector for the first time. The Gambia is one of the African countries whose economy is mainly supported by agriculture. This first ever forum is a turning point for farming in the Gambia, creating a balanced system for farmers and investors. The Ministry of Trade, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture through the Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency, 
and the Central Project Coordinating Unit has some solid reform plans for farmers and investors. This is the new Gambia, and we think that with the new governance environment and political uh, goodwill that we have, we should all take advantage to take agriculture higher and in the process make sure that uh, the smallholder is not uh, left behind. This is welcomed by the government. The Minister of Trade, Dr. Asad Toure, said the gathering enabled investors to interact and come up with productive economic outcomes for the new Gambia. My ministry will continue to facilitate and support sectoral partnerships for synergy and the pursuit of enhanced trade and development. We shall work hand in gloves with all sectors of the economy to address trade-related challenges to spur wider investment and growth in our national economy, taking cue from this forum. Agriculture is one of the most well-funded government sectors. For decades, the sector has been receiving projects worth millions of dollars to assist farmers, especially those in rural communities. However, many farmers still remain economically disadvantaged. This new government should link onto the interest rates like in Senegal or other countries when it comes to financing agriculture. No agricultural investor, no agricultural investor will be, made, will be able to make a profit if you are giving a loan to invest in agriculture with an interest rate of 29%. That's impossible. The new Minister of Agriculture is cognizant of this fact as part of his reform plans to revive agricultural production in the Gambia. As most Gambians are employed in agriculture, the new government has a series of reform plans, one of which is to connect the Gambia to the wider world, promoting cross-cutting developments in all sectors, especially agriculture. Reporting for DRS News, I am Samarakani. Moving out to another press release, the Ministry of Transport informs the general public that, with immediate effect, normal traffic is allowed to pass without restriction or discrimination on under the Arch 22nd, now renamed Banjul Arch. A media release from the Ministry, however, excludes trucks or all types of buses, with more than three axles from this directive. Truck drivers are all to continue to use the bond road to Banjul, and bus drivers entering Banjul can use the box bar road. All drivers are strictly owed to comply and to observe standard speed limit, as police and other law enforcement bodies will be at the eye to ensure that adherence to this notice is maintained at all times to release ends. The Gambia is hosting a youth conference on peace building. The two-day seminar is organized by UNESCO. Fatu Janimbai tells us more. UNESCO and partners hold the belief that war begins in the minds of men and it is the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. The statement became the major highlight as UNESCO hosts a regional conference with the theme Youth, Peace Building and Regional Solidarity, Lessons from Africa. The forum attracted hundreds of youths from across the continent to discuss the role of young people in peace building in Africa. As most of you know, Gambia is the birthplace of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. This first holistic instrument protecting human rights in Africa. The conference chose the Gambia to learn from the maturity showed by youths during the recent post-election political standoff. UNESCO said it is that maturity on the side of the Gambian youths that breeds the peace the nation is enjoying today. Youth have been and still are at the forefront of the struggles for democracy and development, as we have seen in so many places from Tunisia, where and even much older dictatorship was uprooted. Most of the participants in this forum are youth leaders, journalists, activists and musicians who in their own ways play key roles in the promotion of peace, democracy and good governance in their respective countries and by extension in Africa. Among them is Malal Talafu Maladi of Senegal and Ismail Dukure of Mali. I want to sincerely thank you for taking your time and for believing in the young and also to ensure that they are not only backbenchers or they are not only seen as people who should be referred to in the document, 
and when it comes to implementation, they evaporate. The UNESCO Youth Conference was also meant to promote Article 19, which advocates for freedom of the press. The two-day regional seminar was also graced by Nancy Nyang, permanent secretary at the office of the vice president. Madam Nyang said the Gambia, under the new government, would respect the rule of law and freedom of the press. I understand that the role of the youth in the democratic transition of Africa, the part to be played by youth movements after democratic transition and post-conflict, as well as the future of youth development in Africa, will be examined in depth in the next two days. Participating youths are already thrilled with the initiative. I said programs like this, I think uh, are some of the things that will help us realize ourselves as Africans, realize ourselves as Gambians, know our responsibilities and then reshape those responsibilities into constructive action plans that would get towards our development. The message is youth should choose peace and never allow society to use them as tools to propagate violence. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Fatujan Mbai. China's Ministry of Forestry says China is committed to combating the illegal trading of wildlife. This comes at a time much blame is being placed on Chinese businesses for engaging in the trade in Africa. Rehibita reports. The Deputy Director General of Wildlife Conservation and Natural Resource Management of SFA has said that China now pays key attention to combating illegal wildlife trade. Mr. Wang Wenseng said this during a press conference with African journalists by the Chinese Forestry Ministry officials. Uh, China has established a uh, legislative framework which is punishable by life in prison. This, he said, is also manifested through support in Africa with funds supported wildlife, which is now up to 20 million U.S. dollars. Support for wildlife conservation in Africa, in Africa has been above uh, 2,000, uh, 20 million U.S. dollars. And, uh, and also, we support a series of uh, Fears of uh, uh, wildlife uh, protection staff. In its drive to ensure wildlife conservation, China is said to have registered immense success in that drive, and they were able to achieve this through sensitization and commitment to fulfilling all international mandates through the work of its various departments. The support of the NGO group China Wildlife Conservation Association, which is advocating for people not to consume wildlife, along with several voluntary activities, seems to help a great deal. Rahi Bite, reporting for Jersey's News from Beijing, China. Tankular in the Kian West District is set to benefit from the construction of a new hospital worth over two million dollars. I start to get a has more. Tankular is a village in the western Kian District, a largely farming and fishing community living off the road in the inner confines of the district. This close-knit settlement has so far too long been faced with lack of proper health care facilities, having only the MRC Center in Kanaba and Karam Taba as their only hope to access health care service in the area. Our people here really suffered. If you have um, um, an emergency or an acute condition, to the nearest village, the village that they can go is Kanaba to see MRC. We all know the MRC is a research center. They don't do many, many of the major cases that we think about. And then all what they could do is stabilize the patient and all later refer. And the other facility that is in our catchment area is Karantaba, which is very, very far from here. So you can say the nearest um, facility where you can have access to health care is almost about 30 to 35 kilometers away from here. Looking at the road condition, definitely they really suffer. The poor condition of the road makes it more difficult to transport patients, especially during emergencies. The decades-old Christ will soon be history, following the laying of the foundation stone of the over $2 million health facility. The project is funded by Samtar Global Foundation. In July 2015, he formed this association 
and then the aim of the association is to enhance the lives of the poor and the needy. So this association, we have seen that health care is a problem in the village here, considering the distance. So to have a health force here, we feel it is necessary. That is why we embark on this project. The community-led initiative championed by the sons and daughters of the village, both home and abroad, was held by the community who took time to offer prayers and words of gratitude to the foundation. For health ministry officials, the development is a step in the right direction as it will help in their quest to provide universal coverage for health care delivery in the country. And this is a very historic occasion in, 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 the, his, in the annals of history of uh, Kiantankular. There is first health center to be constructed in this village. Here now we are talking about universal access, universal covering, and, uh, and then reaching the people, reaching the unrich. So this health center will definitely help us as a ministry to, to in, in those directions. This development, a one-off event for the villagers, is expected to pave the way for other development initiatives to help advance health care delivery in rural communities like Tankula. For JATES News, I am Isotu Keita. We'll take our first break now. Sports is up next. Stay tuned. Welcome back in sports. Brazil are crowned the world beach soccer champions. But far away in East Africa, the sports is gaining a following in Uganda. Beach soccer is becoming more popular, but the country is still catching up at the professional levels. Details in this report. The shores of Lake Victoria have always guaranteed a spectacular backdrop to what is now a popular sport. Beach soccer here is electrifying. Many players have left the 11 aside format of football for the game on the sand and have quickly caught on to the trend. You should know how to dodge, know how to, to hold the ball, know how to, to dive. Those are the skills that we use here, so, which is not so common with other players. With over 30 league clubs and corporate teams already, the games have always delivered some of the most compelling battles. The goals galore and skills displayed here have made beach soccer more competitive. The local association is now keen on spreading the sport to other parts of the country. But there are challenges ahead. We need to have uh, playing facilities. This is the, the, the biggest problem because we normally have Lido Beach and uh, Sports Beach. But if we can uh, improve on uh, playing facilities, I think uh, we, we can catch up. And Ugandans are full of ambition to succeed even on the international stage. After falling behind Kenya and Tanzania in regional rankings, Uganda is determined to kick its way back up. I believe if the federation uh, puts this team uh, into more international and confederation competitions, we will regain our glory and be the most uh, 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 strong team, a uh, national team in East Africa, and uh, we have a very serious master plan in strategizing for the 2019 FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup. Regional associations are already mooting plans for an East and Central Championship to tap into the growing enthusiasm. There are expectations that such plans for future competitions could further propel the development of beach soccer, not just on these sandy beaches but also across the region. Leon Sanyange, CGTN, Entebbe, Central Uganda. We'll be back with news from outside the Gambia after this break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Iraq has started to load a tanker with 2 million barrels of crude oil bound for Egypt. It is the first delivery under the bilateral agreement signed between the two countries last month. Now the one-year deal will see Iraq deliver 12 million barrels of crude oil to Egypt. CGTN Siasa Hakim has more. Egypt 
imports more than 1.8 million tons of oil per month. That's around 30% of its consumption. And most of its needs were supplied by Saudi Arabia. But as some claimed were political reasons, the Saudi Kingdom suspended oil shipments for about five months late last year. This led Egypt to seek new sources elsewhere. Deals were signed with Kuwait, Algeria and the United Arab Emirates. And although the five-year Saudi shipments have resumed, Egypt still signed their latest deal with Iraq as part of a new policy of diversifying oil suppliers. The one-year deal of 12 million barrels is seen as the beginning of long-term economic cooperation between Cairo and Baghdad. The two sides are also reviewing a long-term project with Jordan. They are aiming to construct pipelines to connect the three countries and guarantee permanent oil supplies for Egypt. Yas Hakim for CGTN, Cairo. From that we join the Central Forecast Office for the day's weather outlook. Hello, good evening, and you're watching the latest weather report from the Central Forecast Office. First, we start with the summary of the day's weather. It was warm and sunny throughout the day. To the satellite image, which says current weather conditions in Africa, convective clouds over Gulf of Guinea and central part of Africa, causing lightning, thunderstorm, and rainy activities over these affected areas. Tonight, fairly warm and partly cloudy conditions are expected over the coastal area, whereas the inland will be warm. Tomorrow, mild with partly cloudy conditions are expected in the morning, becoming warm and sunny with slightly hazy conditions throughout the country. Surface wind flow will vary between southwesterly and westerly in direction, with speed ranging from 10 to 35 kilometers per hour. Minimum temperatures expected across the country will be 21 degrees Celsius over Greater Banjo, West Coast, and Lower River region. 20 over North Bank, 22 over Central River Region, and 23 over Upper River Region. Maximum temperatures expected will be 35 degrees Celsius over Greater Banjo, 41 over West Coast, Lower River Region, and North Bank, 42 degrees Celsius over Central River Region, and 43 over Upper River Region. For those going to see, low tide will be 0 0.2 meters at 4 a.m and 0 0.3 meters at 4 p.m. High tide will be 1.6 meters at 10 a.m. and at 10 p.m. Waves will be 1 to 2 meters northwesterly swells. The sun will rise at 6.38 and will set at 19.25. That's all for the forecast and I'm your presenter, Awa Jawa. Good night. And with that, we come to the end of the news. But before we take leave of you, a recap of today's main stories. Ministers from across West Africa have validated the Banjo Plan of Action taken to prevent statelessness in the sub-region. The Ministry of the Interior has issued a warning to private security companies operating without valid licenses. Brazil may be crowned champions of beach soccer, but Ugandans are catching up fast in the game. Two million barrels of crude oil from Iraq is bound for Egypt under a new bilateral agreement between the two countries. Well, that was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company and do stay with you. Yes.